Okay, so I just watched uh, last night One Child Nation. Um, it showed up on a lot of uh, lists for the best of 2019 and on uh, decentfilms.com. It was, I think, in his top three. Um, so I was like, I'm going to watch this. Okay, I've been putting it off. I'm going to watch this. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. Um, this is a second documentary by Nanfu Wang, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She grew up in China, now lives in the U.S. Um, went back a second time to do a second documentary, this time on the one child uh, policy, um, which is a little... Uh, it's a risk for her to do this. So um, she did this, interviewed her family, um, various officials, and other people that, you know, are affected, grew up um, with this policy in place. It was really, really well done. Um, the way I would describe it is authentic and unedited, um, meaning that like when she interviewed people, she let like their words just be there exactly what they were um one official uh said she performed tens of thousands of forced sterilizations and abortions and killings um were her words and she um now is working with infertile couples as a way to atone for her sins also her words another official um you know didn't have uh that same didn't have uh didn't share in that kind of remorse she was like this was the policy it was good for the nation it was good for the country and i was doing my job um, and then you had people in between who were like, well, what were we supposed to do? It was, it was a law. We had to do it, you know? Um, so it kind of ran the gamut. Um, it was really interesting, her interview of her families when she talked to her mother and, um, they lived in a rural area and so they could have a second child. It was, um, permitted if it was, um, at least five years, um, apart, um, and because her first child was a girl, they wanted to try for a second child. And when she was about to have the baby, her grandmother brought in a basket and said, if it's a girl, we're going to put it in the basket and put it out at market. Um, so that was like her own like experience. It was a boy. So that didn't happen. But, um, yeah, it was really interesting. She talked to her uncle who, who did have a, a he took his newborn daughter, him and her mother and brought it uh, out to market and left it there with like $20 and hoping that somebody would take it and nobody did and the baby died covered in mosquito bites after two days. Um, really, you know, sad, thought-provoking um, stories that were shared and I feel honored to have heard these people's stories. Regardless of what they thought about the policy or about what happened, I am honored to to know that so that these aren't forgotten. Um, and she talks about that in the documentary, how uh, China now has a two-child policy, and that this, you know, section of time of the one-child policy, because it's a communist country with lots of propaganda, that uh, it runs the risk of just being completely forgotten, and lots of families and people and children were affected by this and she didn't want it just to just be lost and forgotten so I really really commend her for making this documentary um she interviewed an artist uh it's really really fascinating to see like what he did what his thoughts were and why he did it um yeah the whole thing was really really good uh, I just had one thing that I thought stuck out like a sore thumb and it was like the last like third of the movie. It's not very long. I think it's like a little over an hour and a half. Um, she, uh, she's like standing and it shows her like looking off in the distance and she just says, um, just, she finds it interesting that she came from a country that forced women, you know, to have like sterilizations and abortions. And now she lives in a country that restricts abortions and that both don't allow women to do what they want with their own bodies. And um, it felt to me that it would just kind of was stuck in the movie and I didn't know, it didn't feel authentic to me, like why it was there. The story I make up is that uh, because of all the images of uh, fully formed fetuses that were killed and um, left to just die. It was often said that uh, babies were delivered during abortions and then killed, that she wanted to put, share her, like, you know, 
her thoughts in that uh, she's not like anti-abortion. That's, that's the story I make up. Um, aside from that story, which I have no idea, um, I think just a statement, you know, um, doing whatever you want with your body or having the freedom to do whatever you want with your body, um, I think is a gross, like, oversimplification, regardless of what country you're in. Um, it doesn't really hold water for me because, to me, it seems to make the fetus, like, your property. And that harkens back to a time when women were property, and so men could divorce them at will, abandon them at will, kill them. And this still happens today with women when they're in a country or a culture where they're considered property. Um, and so I, I don't think, I think if you're gonna consider something property, well then we need to go, like, go down that road. Well, why is the fetus property instead of a, of a, a, why does it not, you know, without personhood that has like the right to live, you know, that kind of stuff. I think that it's worthy to have like that conversation. Um, but uh, the other, like, so that's why I think it's a, a gross oversimplification. Um, but other than that, the entire like documentary was really well done. And like I said, authentic. Um, when I was telling Kelsey more about like, there were a lot more details that I shared with him um, cause he's not going to see it. Uh, it was hard not to shed tears, you know. Um, she spoke with a, a twin sister who, she was the one child. And the, uh, they didn't have a permit for her twin sister, so she was abandoned. Um, she was sent to an orphanage and now lives in the U.S. But um, how the one-child policy influenced, you know, that family didn't want to give up that girl. Um, they were forced to. And so it influenced um, children that were forcibly abandoned and human trafficking because people would gather up the infants off the side of the road and bring them to orphanages who just said hey here's some money and then people spent did jail time for this prison time um, in China for a policy that once international adoption became a thing you know lent itself to to human trafficking basically so and then you know how the families you know anyway it's just a lot and uh, to get a behind the scenes look at the communist country with the propaganda and how they, I mean, they have stuff up everywhere about the one child policy. Um, that her family, like you would get like a little paper card. It's, a, it's like a report card. And there were like 10 ways to be a stellar, you know, citizen in China. And you would get a gold star for each of them, one, one was if you had only one child, you would get a gold star right there. And her family never had that gold star because they had two children, because she had her, her younger brother. Um, even though it was allowed, they weren't the you know stellar citizen. Um, it's just really, really fascinating. And I am honored to witness and be able to cherish some of these memories and stories shared by people who who experienced all of this. And um, so I definitely think that it is a worthwhile watch that sometimes things happen. Tra I think in my opinion is that one child policy was a tragedy and um, lending like uh, my witness to that, I am grateful to do that. So there's my thoughts on one child nation.